Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert back with the Ted Show. TGIF, happy Friday, everybody. Very excited to have this young lady on the show. Royce King is here. We're going to talk about revving up, rev up your revenues. Aren't we all wanting to go out with a bang in 2020? A good bang. And 2021, we're all excited because we feel like there's some new hope going on there. So it's the perfect time to talk about revving up your revenue. Uh, you can go, you can find Royce at yourstartup.coach, yourstartup.coach, which is scrolling across the bottom. Welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ted. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm excited to have you on the show. I think you have really up and look who popped in to say hello. <laughs> I hey, think Jay. I know that face. <laughs> you know that face. Okay. Hey, um, so you have had an interesting journey and you know, everybody, we love to hear our origin story because we want to know how you got to the point where you're feeling good about coaching and where you, where you can actually share some of the insights uh, and tips for revving up revenue. So uh, give us a little origin story, please. Oh, Ted, it's been a long journey, but very fruitful. So I will summarize it in just a couple of minutes. I started out in entrepreneurship in 1989, believe it or not. And the goal was to stay home with my children rather than climbing the corporate ladder. And I uh, have been a serial entrepreneur since that time. I've owned 12 different businesses wow. in a variety of verticals um, from Courses and equine assisted learning to an insurance agency and a lot of things in between. So it's been an interesting journey where I have learned the basics of business that transcend each industry. And my favorite niche has always been marketing. And I've been the marketing arm for most of my own businesses and really learn to perfect it as marketing has gone from entirely offline to digital marketing. And uh, so that's been my journey. And since 2014, I have focused on coaching over 250 startups and really pride myself in keeping up with what has changed in marketing. So tell me, I love that because I'm a, I'm a big fan of startups. I think anybody who's got a creative idea, who's willing to get it to the point where they're actually sharing it, it's a big step. And so I love to listen to the ideas. What was 2020 like for you as far as your business? How did you pivot? And uh, startups also got impacted because everything shut down. Yeah, I can tell you that while I'm up over last year's revenue, that the way I'm earning revenue has changed tremendously. I thought when COVID started that being online and coaching worldwide, that my business would not be touched because I, I already coached startups worldwide and worked remotely full time. And uh, boy, was I wrong. So <laughs> I went from less private coaching clients to more group coaching clients because I have a monthly group training that is uber affordable for startups who are really struggling to generate revenue consistently. And I also have volunteered hundreds of hours with the SBDC and a program here in Colorado called Energize Colorado, which is a statewide initiative to get startups through COVID and help them survive. And so I've donated hundreds of hours to mentoring businesses through those two programs this year and written a lot of copy as cut as my brands that I've worked with have continued to revise their message to stay relevant in COVID. It's, it's interesting because 2020, obviously, this was a make it or break it year for a lot of people. It was, it was also a year where people made the leap finally. And so that's why I started, I believe, right at the beginning even of COVID when the shutdown became a reality, I started to see so many people leave their industry 
or if they got furloughed, they were starting something I had no idea they were even interested in. So one thing that I, I always like to look at the silver lining, I feel like 2020 forced the hand of many people to take that leap and to actually live out their dream, try to flesh out the details of doing what they feel like their purpose is. Uh, so it's been, it's been a it's been a blessing in disguise. I don't want to say 2020 is a whole blessing, but uh, for for a lot of people, I saw a lot of movement, forward movement in what they wanted to accomplish. So let's talk about revenue, because I think a lot of companies uh, have been impacted uh, so many uh, on the negative side with revenue being down. Uh, but they're all looking forward to 2021. I think people are thinking, oh, gosh, 2020 is a wash. It's December but people are hopeful for 2021. So let's talk about how people rev it up. Uh, you picked the title, which I love. Um, so how do we rev up our revenue? How do we get ready for what 2021 is? And how do we do the things that are positive in order to rev up that revenue? Ted, thanks for asking. I validate the statement you just made about 2020 being an opportunity for those who have been furloughed or um, been affected to the degree that they've been prompted to start their own business. And I've seen a rise in that. To correlate with that, though, 80 some percent of business owners don't understand how to market their business. And that's where revving up your revenue makes a big difference because you can send all the sales forces out there you want to try to sell. But if people look at your online assets and the messaging isn't congruent with what you're trying to sell, That's right. there's confusion. And yeah. your, your bounce rate goes up, your closing ratio goes down. And so really having a solid marketing plan and message in place before you go out into the public facing eye is so important. And statistics show that on average, a client will read five to eight pieces of information about your company before they make a decision to even have a conversation. So if I'm buying, it doesn't matter what I'm buying. If I'm buying a new lipstick brand or a car, I'm going to go on to two or three sites that sell that product and look at several pieces of information before I end up initiating the conversation. And so your website, your online assets needs to have a congruent message that hits home with that target or audience. So, so let me ask, because I think people go, okay, I understand what she's saying. People want to be at point A to point B, but they don't know how to even take that first baby tiny step for, to get there. They feel, I know because I, I help a lot of them. I'm not a coach, but in my business businesses, I definitely help people try to get them uh, on the right track. What's, what's something, if somebody's listening to this right now and saying, all right, I've got this, I've got a startup or I've got an idea. Um, should I quit my job right now and jump into it? Should I, uh, what, what are some of the things? Cause I've told people, please don't quit your job until you have everything fleshed out. But uh, it's better if it comes from an expert like you. <laughs> You're right, don't quit your job. Most entrepreneurs, especially startup founders have done their gig on the side until they figured out what they're doing. And they have, um, you know, Sometimes I'll use the business model canvas with my clients until you've flushed out your business model where your messaging and your customer segment and your channels for revenue are congruent. You can really make a mess of things. So no, yes. don't quit your job. Flush things out and validate your idea before you um, eliminate that source of income. Well, that's the thing. I think there's there's this mindset sometimes that, well, if I if you really want to do what you love, real estate, I'll use that for an example. A lot of realtors start out as part time and um, they're trying to find that balance. So they're a great example, actually. So they're trying to find the balance so they can get rid of their job so they can do real estate full time. 
And so that's the, to me, that's sort of a smart way to start because remember you have, you have your retirement plan that you might have at work. You have your health insurance. So when you become an entrepreneur, the buck stops at you, you're it. And so yeah. you have to have uh, money in the bank or have got a grant or whatever it is that you're working on. Uh, but you also have to have enough to cover you for, for those things. Being a business owner is different than being an employee. Oh my gosh, it is. The mindset alone is different. And I encourage people to really look at their mindset first before they take that leap because some of us are wired to start businesses like I've started 12. And so not knowing when my next paycheck will come in doesn't scare me because I've weathered the storm and I've done this before. Uh, but some people need the security of that nine to five and that every week or every two week paycheck and health insurance, and they need to know what to expect in life. And so I really challenge you to take a serious look at your mindset before even thinking about entrepreneurship, because if you're not wired that way, it can be devastating. And it's not always easy to get up in the morning and go, the buck stops with me. I have to make this happen. I think people too, they want to have the control, but they don't want the responsibility that goes mm -hmm. with the control. So like, like Royce is saying, it's so true. You have to, you have to figure out if you're a worker bee. And I say that in a positive way, we need people who work nine to five and take their two weeks vacation. And uh, they depend on that consistency in their income and they know everything going in next year is pretty much going to be the same as last year. If you're that type person, that doesn't mean anything bad. It just means that you have to figure out if you actually have the entrepreneurial spirit, which is, and the wherewithal and the mindset, like Royce is saying, if you do, then you just have to make smart choices. Um, when you are working on your side hustle, your side business, whatever the terminology is. But it's so true. I think that people, the mindset, if you're not built like that, if you freak out when you take a day off work because you only have four PTO days left, then being an entrepreneur is going to really scare you <laughs> because <laughs> nobody's paying you. No one is paying you. So you could take off when you want. And for some people, they don't, have you found that they don't actually enjoy the control like they thought they would? I have seen that, yes. And the control is exactly why I became an entrepreneur. But in those frightening moments when you go weeks or even months without a paycheck, like you talked about real estate, real estate's super competitive. Yes. And I write a ton of copy. I probably write 100 pieces of content a week. I mean, a month for realtors, not a week, a month. And uh, it's super competitive. And if you're not going to receive a paycheck for several months, it can be scary. Yes, it's very. And so I, my career, I have up until recently, I hadn't really experienced, experienced being an employee. And so my whole career has always been commission. I've always lived off my entrepreneurial stuff. That doesn't mean, guys, that it's easy. Um, there are benefits that come with it, but I think a lot of people look only at the benefits. They can only see what the end result has been rather than all of the struggle that you go through in order to get to where you want to be. I would agree. And we've talked a lot about struggle during this conversation, Ted, but if I could offer hope, I, I want to offer a resource for those who are trying to create a side gig and make it profitable before you quit your job. I have this book, which is available on Amazon, Scale Up Your Profits, and it's about 30 different tips on online marketing for 15 bucks. It's the best investment you'll ever make. And then I have my monthly level up, scale up training program, which is uber affordable and gives you some one on one contact with some real world um, hot seat mentoring to get you in the chair and help you navigate the challenge that you're experiencing today. So I want to say that there's always hope and resources out there 
for anyone that has that desire to really create something great. So what's your, agreed, a thousand percent on all of it. What's your 2021 plans? I think it's good for people to know, um, you know, what, what you're doing. Cause they look at you and they probably think she's got everything mapped out. She's golden. She never has any challenges. That's what they think when we're on these shows. So tell us <laughs> a little insight into what you're planning for 2021. Oh gosh. Well, what I'm planning in 2021 actually started this year through the very first faith-based book that I've ever written. And um, talk about marketing challenges. I, I'm going to be very vulnerable if I can for a moment, Ted, and share Unwrapping Your Worth in Christ. Again, it's a faith-based book. And, and so for those of you who are not Christians, I apologize. Take it in the context of our marketing conversation today. But, um, you know, I, I'm really passionate about helping missionaries get funded and on the mission field. And so I wrote this book, but here's where the marketing challenge came in. The outside looks amazing. The inside, when I proofed it, looked amazing. And then I received my copy. Not so amazing. So we went back to the drawing board, fired some people that didn't do a good job, hired some people with more expertise in what they're doing. Again, stay in your lane, know what you're good at. Yeah, I hired some more expertise and um, we're going to already launch a second edition uh, because what you present to the world matters. And I always try to deliver excellence in what I market to the world. And so even though that's book has nothing to do with my business per se. It's still a reflection of me and what I'm willing to accept. And I want you to take that into whatever idea or startup business you have and deliver it with excellence and expect the best from yourself. Yes. And, you know, there's um, minimum viable product, which is okay to release something that's not so great. But learn from it and continue to improve and iterate until it is the best you can produce. Fantastic. All right, Royce, how do people get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to reach out to you, find you, find your books, all of that good stuff? Well, yourstartup.coach. I have a contact form. You're welcome to reach out to me there. You can book a discovery call if you want to chat about your business and how I can work with you. And all of my books are on Amazon. Thanks so much, Ted. You're a blessing and a joy. I appreciate you. Merry Christmas. Thank you for sharing uh, your journey and really great tips. I love it. So come back any, anytime you'd like. Uh, thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you back soon. Bye, everybody.